The search for collaborative opportunities amid global trade and economic uncertainties has brought focus to the advantages of the Belt and Road Initiative, as addressed by global law firm Brian Cave Leighton Paisner. My opinion is it's vitally important. I think it provides huge uh, momentum. I think it, it provides um, a concept that, that people can really understand and, and latch on to. We're seeing a, a lot of um, trade tensions, even potential trade wars around, around the world, and, and really Belt and Road is the antithesis of all of that. It's actually something that's very positive and pushing out a lot of cross-border collaboration and development. Indeed, such opportunities provide near-term and future Belt and Road developments to come. The big ticket projects that define the Belt and Road in, in, the, in the public perception are the big transport and, and power projects. Master planning, urban development, social infrastructure. We believe that there are huge opportunities in the Belt and Road countries for these types of projects to be supported and contributed to by the Chinese. In the major project sector, Brian Cave Leighton Paisner has advised on Belt and Road projects across the initiative, including in Greece. So we acted for Chinese lenders, lending to the uh, Chinese operators who took over the port of Piraeus. Uh, that was a, a, a very early example of the Belt and Road Initiative, but one that was very interesting in the sense that it traversed both China and Southern Europe. The firm also has a team devoted to structuring financial transactions operating from Hong Kong. Particularly for the, the finance side, so asset finance um, and particularly aviation finance, shipping finance, that's a huge, huge area and, and, and Hong Kong really does play a very crucial role in that for the Belt and Road Initiative. Ian Ivory has specific expertise in the corporate finance arena very active sector in Hong Kong. We see a huge amount of deal activity coming through Hong Kong, either mainland Chinese companies going out into the rest of the world, or equally we've got clients coming from Europe, from the Americas, even from Africa, from Russia, looking to do transactions in mainland China or, or the rest of Asia, and again using Hong Kong as the conduit. From the Chinese mainland, Belt and Road business is very significant through Hong Kong in mergers and acquisitions. A lot of holding companies in China, they will have a Hong Kong holding companies first, and then through those Hong Kong holding companies, then they make an actual investment overseas. And vice versa, when the foreign investors, they come to China, they tend to stop at Hong Kong first. China's Greater Bay Area Initiative, bringing together nine mainland cities with Hong Kong and Macau into an integrated economic and business hub, is also seen as a major force for development. If you look at the focus now from, from government down on things like recycling projects, um, clean energy, even if you go up to Shenzhen now you see all the electric taxis, the electric buses, I think it's a fantastic thing and something that other cities around the world can learn from. It has the potential to become a real economic powerhouse and a massive opportunity for Hong Kong to play a central role from the ground floor up in terms of the planning, the, the structures, the governance, the agreements and then the implementation and delivery of not only the infrastructure projects but also the means of trade between uh, the, the nine cities.